scoring is one of the most important jobs in cricket and it's steeped in tradition. In the early days, runs were recorded by a notch being cut into a stick with a knife. That's why we have the term a batter notched a century. Scorers in junior format stage two won't need a stick and knife. They'll use a new look scorecard and this video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to use it. Before the first ball is bowled, take the time to fill in the information about the game. This is standard stuff. Jot down the names of both teams, whose innings this sheet will detail, the date, the start time, the ground where the game is being played, the team that won the toss, and don't forget to include the age and division. You'll then need to fill in the batting order, starting with the openers. Place the name of the batter who faces the first ball at the top of the order. Some scorers like to wait until the batter walks out before writing their name, just in case the coach decides to change the order. OK, you'll now need to fill in the bowlers' names in the order that they bowl. If you aren't sure of who's been handed the ball during the match, simply call out to the umpire for confirmation. And don't be frightened to yell out, bowler's name? It's as much a part of cricket as a bowler screaming, how's that? When the batter faces a ball but doesn't score a run, you still need to note it. We do this to have a record of how many balls have been bowled in the over and how many deliveries the batter has faced. To note the delivery, you simply place a dot in two boxes, the batters and the bowlers. The batter has hit the ball and is sprinting down towards the other end of the pitch. Each time the batter runs the length of the pitch equals one run. If they run down and back without getting out, it's two runs. Your job is to record the number of runs that are scored in three boxes, the batters, the bowlers and in the progressive score box. Hitting the ball isn't the only way runs are scored in cricket. This might include when the bowler bowls an illegal ball and the umpire signals a no ball or wide. Another way runs are added to the score when a batter doesn't hit the ball with their bat is through buys and leg buys. Buys occur when the ball goes past the wicketkeeper and the batter runs. Leg buys are scored after the ball hits some part of the batter's body and they run. You'll need to include buys and leg buys in the total score and you'll also need to note them in the scorebook. When a bowler is no balled, place an O in the batter's box, the bowler's box, the progressive total box and the relevant extras total box. When the bowler bowls are wide, place a W in the batter's box, the bowler's box the progressive total box and the relevant extras total box. When a bowler has bowled a bye, place a B in the batter's box, the bowler's box, the progressive total box and the relevant extras total box. When a bowler bowls a single leg bye, place an LB in the batter's box, the bowler's box, the progressive total box and the relevant extras total box. If they score two leg buys, mark it as 2LB. If you're scoring a Stage 2 match, you'll need to write down the details of a dismissal. Was the batter caught, bowled, given LBW or run out? Remember to add the name of the fielder if the batter was caught. You mark their achievement by simply jotting down the letter X in the bowlers and batters box. Make sure you add the number of runs the batter scored, as well as the amount of balls they faced during their innings. You'll also need to record the score at fall of wicket, the name of the batter who was dismissed, and the not out batter. You'll notice in a game, an umpire makes a lot of different signals during a match. They're quite easy to understand. This is the signal for a wide. This is for a no ball. The umpire will do this to indicate a bye. This indicates a leg bye. This is the signal for a four. 
the umpire will signal a six by doing this. This is the signal for a dead ball. An umpire will signal a short run this way. The umpire will signal a batter is out like this. When the over is completed, you need to tally how many runs were scored off the bowler and fill in the detail. Once that's done, complete the progressive over total box. You'll need to repeat this at the end of each over throughout the game. If a batter isn't dismissed, you'll need to ensure once they have reached their maximum deliveries, 20 balls in a T20 match or 35 balls in a 30 over game, that they retire. They can return in the same order of retirement should there be balls remaining at the end of the innings. Finally, please make sure you enter your scorecard into MyCricket.